We have long attested that there is substantial evidence to be found within the many ancient ruins which span the continents of the earth. Evidence to suggest that said relics were in reality not constructed by their currently claimed constructors. Not only are their often advanced features shown to have been far out of the capabilities of the claimed culprits, our more recent ancestors, but additionally, many of these ruins are also indicative of not one, but several past, highly advanced, world-conquering, yet now lost super-civilizations. Evidence which indicates that advanced civilization has flourished and fallen many times, a legacy currently lost in the past, yet as the evidence of their lives, and indeed the dates of their demise becomes a pursuit of modern researchers, they are now fortunately beginning to unravel here in the modern age, and the Toba catastrophe is one such area of study. One which we believe could strongly indicate the date of the end of one of these ancient civilizations. We've in the past covered the intriguing tablet once found within the now exposed super ruin, now all but consumed by the Guatemalan rainforest. Found at the well-known site of Tikal, this tablet depicts a cataclysmic event, a super volcanic eruption which is depicted as having been followed by a great deluge. The tablet has since been stolen, which merely adds to its past validity. But this event could explain the Mayans' obsession with calendars and their predicting the end times. But I digress, the Toba event was a super eruption that occurred about 75,000 years ago in what is now known as present-day Lake Toba, Sumatra, Indonesia. This enormous lake was formed almost instantly when Toba decided to belch the Earth's core into the atmosphere many years ago. It is one of the Earth's largest ever eruptions. The theory holds that this event caused a global volcanic winter, which lasted between 6 to 10 years. This also triggered a 1,000 year long cooling episode. If there was a densely populated civilization alive at the time, a civilization akin to that of the Guatemalan mega metropolis mentioned previously, now estimated to have had a past population in excess of 10 million, such an event and the long lasting climactic changes which followed would have devastated crops and industry as a whole, and such a huge event that it would have undoubtedly make a past civilization crash, an event that even us within our own technological age simply could not cope with, and would also unquestionably experience a population crash and a grinding halt of practically all industries and economies. An event which would reset us not only biologically, but also technologically. Why were the Mayans obsessed with end times? Why were Neoliths obsessed with solar activity? Perhaps they experienced something which caused this fixation. And it is not just us who suspect this event having once caused trauma and death. In 1993, science journalist Ann Gibbons also posited that a population bottleneck occurred in human development about 70,000 years ago, and she suggested that this was caused by the eruption. Geologist Michael R. Rampino of New York University and volcanologist Stephen Self of the University of Hawaii at Manoa support her suggestion. In 1998, the bottleneck theory was further developed by anthropologist Stanley H. Ambrose of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. However, predictably, the event's consequences, along with the many global winter theories, remain a touchy subject within mainstream academia and is still a highly controversial area of study. Did the Toba eruption cause the demise of a past lost civilization? With this date of 70,000 years, it at least gives us a target for exploration, one which we find highly compelling. Although the Roman Empire are largely attributed with the invention of countless ingenious inventions, the truth regarding the origin of these innovations, however, may in all possibility be placed far earlier in human history. Many individual researchers, those whom are fortunately not responsible for telling lines of modern paradigm, have long claimed, just as mystery history is often posited, many said developments can in fact be identified at many other, far older ancient ruins many predating that of the Roman Empire by millennia. These repeated earlier discoveries, along with their inexplicably rapid societal advancement, is compelling evidence to support the postulation that, just like that of the ancient Egyptians, the Romans merely adopted lost technologies, along with many ancient architectural wonders, subsequently claiming them as their own, was merely to create an illusionary air of intimidation, which would have surrounded their claimed capabilities. 
This fitting, if highly controversial hypothesis could undoubtedly explain the ongoing mystery surrounding the remarkable success of the ancient Romans, their empire's longevity, and ultimately, their stagnation and eventual demise. We have in the past explored the astonishing irrigation systems of pre-Incan Peru, along with that of the sewage and water systems of Pompeii, a literal time capsule long encased in volcanic ash not rediscovered until very recently. Yet, thanks to this incredible preservation, we were able to identify compelling anomalous features like that of the heavily rutted polygonal roadways. Specifically, we focused upon the elaborate, highly sophisticated sewage system once placed beneath its still unexplained enigmatic roadways. A system still functional to this day, yet the most compelling of all is its metallurgy the singular characteristic which we feel proves beyond any doubt that such exquisite systems are not the work of the well-studied Roman Empire, but are instead a relic of a far more advanced, far more technologically capable, yet now lost civilization. For although like that of the unexplained Peruvian systems, it is still functional, a testament to the constructor past precision and workmanship, yet most interesting fact is that the pipes which served clean drinking water were all constructed from tin, while those transporting waste were made of lead. The reason why this is a compelling fact is because whoever built this system were fully aware of lead poisoning, yet the apparently more modern systems, presumably copied by Romans, were all made from lead. The reason for this is that at the time of the Roman Empire, lead poisoning was not yet understood. Cloaca Maxima, which translates as the Great Sewer, is yet another of these astonishing relics, actively being dismissed as the work of the Romans. Although its tremendous age is undeniable, and the fact that mainstream academia accepts it as having predated the Roman settlement itself, it is regardless still claimed as the work of the Romans. The Cloaca Maxima sewage system, just like that of Pompeii's and those of Peru, are all still functional to this day. This incredible longevity, we feel, is further proof of its original creator's tremendous capabilities. According to Pliny the Elder, an ancient Roman author and someone who could be perceived as one of the original funded opposition, claimed that the center section is centuries older than the surrounding system with the entire relic claimed as having predated the empire itself by more than 500 years. Yet Pliny the Elder, who was tasked by Rome to explain the site's origins, claimed to have somehow known the intricate details surrounding who built the Great Sewer. After researching this relic, we've found large volumes of funded research concerning its past function and the claimed construction during the Roman Empire. However, regardless of this claimed tale of events, the fact that this technology, this incredibly advanced structural technique would have been in its infancy at the time it is currently claimed as having been made, yet is still in use today and has not needed any substantial modification for over 2,000 years. How can one explain how a seemingly new technology was utilized and perfected first time during this brief window in world history? The Cloaca Maxima is undoubtedly an incredible ancient relic, one which we find highly compelling. India possesses an enormous array of incredible ancient architectural accomplishments, mind-boggling feats of ancient engineering, many of which continue to mystify modern explorers and elude modern understandings. Exquisite details displaying prodigious artistic abilities and accuracy ancient stone carvings, which seem all but impossible, yet here they are for all to see. We have in the past explored many of these sites. We have explored the similarities in tool marks found at other sites all over the world. The now lost methods which were utilized to once carve entire temples from a single block of bedrock. We have also investigated the many temples constructed from quarried stones, temples which possess columns seemingly created on lathes, yet many of these pieces weigh in excess of six tons. Just how these feats were accomplished remains a complete mystery. And our next architectural anonymy is of no exception. According to mainstream academics, Virabhadra Temple was built by the brothers Varana and Varupana, which were governors under the Vijayaranga Empire during the reign of King Achutaraya within the 16th century. Located in the village of Lepakshi, 
a significant place in the great Indian epic Ramayana. Legend has it that the bird Jatayu, wounded by the king of Lanka, fell here after a futile battle against the king. When Rama reached the spot, he saw the bird and said compassionately to him, Lapashki, meaning Arise Bird in Telugu. Although the temple is claimed as the work of said brothers, just like that of many other incredible, inexplicable sites throughout the world, any explanation as to how they achieved this incredible feat remains elusive. Additionally, there is one feature in particular which not only remains unexplained, but its past purpose, or perhaps more importantly, how this feature was successfully created remains unknown. Known as the Hanging Pillar of Lepachki, it is a column which initially appears to be a weight-bearing structure. However, on closer inspection, one discovers that this column is in fact set aloft, with its significant weight somehow being dispersed along the temple's roof. It is as if the builder of said temple created the column as a statement, a display of their incredible abilities and architectural skills. The column seemingly serves no function other than to display the capabilities of the temple's builder. It is as if they were simply showing off. Furthermore, along with a past purpose remaining elusive, just how the temple's inner structure actually supports the weight of the column is also an unknown. How can one be expected to believe that a temple such as this, located among many of India's other astonishing ruins, one which possesses clear displays of complex, advanced, and in-depth understandings of load-bearing architecture, along with the majority of its existence currently unexplained, was supposedly built by one of our well-studied ancestors a mere 500 years ago. How can one accept this as a logical explanation for its origins? The Hanging Pillar of Lepashki is clearly an incredible work of ancient engineering, one that, although claimed as the work of known ancestors, remains largely unexplained. It is a temple which we find highly compelling. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization, we theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salvic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, although locally known as a Kurgan, 
This barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens, also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice-aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once-flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once-prospering, worldwide society, and just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints? and whom never made contact. How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures' original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.